Hello. Um, hi, everybody. My name is JJ Asgar, and I'm a developer advocate for the IBM Cloud. Uh, thanks for joining me on streaming. I'm going to be having some fun today uh, on a little bit of a, a different topic than I normally spend my time on with Kubernetes. Um, so we're going to we're going to take a little bit of a, a detour, uh, just because, like I said, um, I want to try something a little bit different today. Uh, I've recently been doing some um, that's what we're looking for. Maintenance, I guess is a good word for it, on some stuff. You may have seen some other streams of me doing random maintenance on different different um, uh, applications or different hosted apps that I've been running. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to go back to some really, really basic um, Linux stuff because it's been a while since I've done this work. So um, I am kind of need to walk through it again. Uh, so hopefully you can join me along this path. Um, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so yeah, hey, thanks for uh, tagging along. I don't know if my little thing is correct here. Uh, yeah, that's not right. So let me change the title real fast. JJ, Tone Linux work. There we go. And we're gonna do this in. Sorry. Science and technology, for some reason it was in podcasts. There we go, that's been updated now. Perfect, um, so you know, uh, tag along. Uh, if you have any questions what I'm doing, uh, please don't hesitate to throw them in the um, chat. I'll be watching it over in the, the corner to make sure everything's doing what we expect it to, uh, and then we'll move from there. So, um, so what are we actually gonna be doing today? Um, I, I'm going to share my screen here in just a moment. Uh, like right now. That should work. Okay. So um, so I have these two machines. Um, I have uh, a instance of... Ooh, that does not look very good, does it? Why does that not look so good? Um, let me go back to me real quick. Let me fix that. What is that? That is above me, isn't it? There we go. Oh, that's my uh, green screen not working how I wanted it to. That's annoying. Okay, sorry, give me a second. Huh. Okay, I don't know why that's not working. Well, sorry, y'all. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure that out later. That's what happens when you mess with stuff. Um, so, yeah, right above me, right there, that's my green screen. I don't know why it's doing that. My mistake. It's all good. Okay, so what are we going to do today? Um, so I have a machine um, that I'm going to... I have a Fedora uh, 33 uh, VM where uh, I'm going to play something called MDADM. Um, if you didn't know, uh, inside of Linux, by default, there's software RAID. So you can have multiple, um, multiple uh, partitions rated, um, or disks for that matter, rated um, through the Linux kernel. So you don't need to use like uh, um, a RAID card or something like that uh, on a server. You can actually do this all through just Linux commands. Um, but before I do that, uh, because I run everything using something called KVM, as you see right here, um, uh, which is, a, uh, I believe, kernel virtual machine, stands for, um, we're going to have to create a new disk. Uh, actually, we're going to create a couple disks. And then I'm going to use a MDADM. I can't, I'll, I'll get that eventually. Um, with this nice little cheat sheet right here, um, which I'll put into the chat right now. Um, to be able to do the work around it. So the idea being that, you know, just kind of create a, uh, create a, hard, dri uh, create a hard drive using KVM um, and then basically create a new disk with a bunch of different um, uh, partitions that all come together. And right now, this example only uses RAID 1, which is, uh, I believe, um, 
mirroring. So, so the idea would be you could have multiple hard drives mirror different stuff. Um, I'm going to see what different versions of RAID we can play around with um, and then they kind of go from there too. So this is a, a lot of uh, learning for me too. Um, I've always used these software when things have gone really, really bad um, because I've had to learn how to use it at the time. Um, but for me to sit here and actually walk through learning how to use it ahead of time is going to be unique for me. So let's, let's have some fun. All right, first thing first. Um, so this is the um, Fedora box I was talking about. So if I cat Etsy uh, Red Hat release, as you see, it's Fedora 33, DNF up, update. I should have everything pretty much updated on this machine already. Oh, I guess I don't. So we'll let that go ahead and just go. Um, just to be on the safe side and make sure that we're running everything new. Fedora does run pretty... Uh, pretty aggressively um, and that's the whole point of Fedora. Uh, so as you can see, I had 300 packages um, out of date. So that'll do it. Um, I don't think I'll reboot the box. I think I'll just let it run uh, and do that thing. On the other hand, um, I have this guy, uh, which is a CentOS 8.3, um, 8 which I believe actually is supposed to be um, stream. I thought this was stream. Uh, it should be stream. So um, we're going to go ahead and create a new hard drive, just as the CyberBiz says here. I'll throw this into the chat too. There we go. So um, if I go ahead and just basically copy paste exactly what he said here, if I go into this images directory, as you see, I have a bunch of QCAL2 images of a different um, bases for different um, OSs that I play with. Uh, as you see, CentOS 8, Fedora 33, Oracle Linux, and even RHEL 8 here. Um, so that's nice. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a, um, a new disk here. Um, we're going to create it as a raw file, right? Oh, here we go. So let's, let's do it as a QTAL2. So we'll do it as QTAL2. Uh, oops. Yeah. So we'll do copy, QCOW2, and we'll do, uh, we'll call this uh, disk or raid disk one dot QCOW2. And we'll do, actually, yeah, how much space do I have left on this box? Um, so we'll do a five gigs. So we'll do, 5G, go ahead and create that. And we should now have that direct file. Direct, or there we go, two. Um, so we'll do, we'll create a disk two. So that's 10 gigs, okay. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just start with there. That seems reasonable, okay. Now that I've created that, um, we need to attach the disk to the image. Um, so if we look back over here, if we do fdisk-l, we have uh, just one drive attached to it, um, VDA, 20 gigs, um, with just two partitions inside of it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to do this with it still on. I'm curious to see if it's actually going to work. So we'll go ahead and do that. Oops. So do, oops. We'll do verse attach disk mdadm. Um, excuse me. Uh, disk read disk one. And we're going to call this VDB cache none. None. No such file directory. OK. 
Okay, so let's use our PWD. There we go. So it's just, uh, um, for whatever reason, it requires the fully, full domain, or not domain, the full um, path. So what I did was, because I put it in the actual images directory, I just used the um, echo, echo, EWD, and it gives us the actual, um, I don't, I didn't want to tab that whole thing out, so I just used PWD there, which is nice. Um, then we'll go ahead and create C and attach C. Oh, no more available PCI slots. How the hell do I fix that? Uh, this one's new. Uh, like I said, I have not done this before, so this is a learning experience for us all. So I could versh edit it. All right, let's try that. So versh edit mdadm, and then PCI. Is there like a total amount that I could have? It's never a good sign when you're already looking at, uh, you know, XML to figure this out. <laughs> I'm not even 10 minutes in and I'm already looking at XML. Um, PCI slot, maybe? No. Slot. Those are all just names of slots. Hmm. I don't want to just edit the XML file below the last statement appearing in the file. I mean, I guess it could. Uh, let's see here. The whole idea was that I was supposed to just be able to dump them in. I mean, I could just use that one disk and mirror it. Yeah, let's just do that for now. I don't, I don't want to get lost in dealing with XML and shit like that right now. Okay. Um, so if I come back over here, F disk dash L. We now have, here we go. Um, wait, why is that so small? That is really small. Reboot, we'll reboot it and try it again, hang on. Um, gray disk two, yes. I'm gonna have more hard drives of this thing soon. Alright, uh, go back in it. Uh, D message, grab PD. PDA, F disk dash L. Oops. Let's see here. Go ahead and go in. F disk dash L. 
still really small. What did I do wrong? Let's go ahead and create a file system. Disk dev b d b print. Um, so fdisk is a super powerful um, command. It's done inside of uh, it's in almost every single Linux now. Um, you, this is how you play around the partition tables. So this is how you create different partitions. If you didn't see, um, if you type the word mount. These are all the different mount points that you have on top of there. And if you notice, for instance, like this is the root with the FF, F, XFS um, file system that is pointed to slash. Um, and then there should be, there we go, VDA here, the boot partition is also XFS. So VD2, um, if we go back to fdisk L, VD2, the other partition right here, is a Linux LVM partition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back into here with FDisk and just create a simple partition so we can start putting a file system on there. So dev vdb and print, make sure we're connected to the correct thing. So we'll do n for new. And then we'll just go ahead and do a primary. And then partition number one. First sector is one, and then everything. And then we do a W to write. So then it, it did it. We do L, and we now notice that it's still really small. <coughs> okay, so that's not right. Um, let's go back into my... Uh, CD var fib. What was it? Uh, webvert uh, images. I'm assuming detach disk. Disk one dot qcal two v d b. How do I detach a disk? Mm. Detach. Disk KVM. So first detach disk domain of MDADM var web revert images raid disk one dash dash persistent config live mount this dash L. There it is. Right there. You're still connected for some reason. Hmm. I don't know. Oh hey, uh Jeff of Raisin Six. Sure. Um yeah, I'm attempting to use KVM to um, attach two disks and then something called MDADM here. Uh, to create a software-based uh, RAID across those two virtual disks inside of KVM. 
It highlights a lot of different things you can do on top of Linux, and it's very low level when it comes to Linux stuff. But um, very rarely do I actually practice doing this stuff. So um, I wanted to spend this stream trying to go through it and try to figure out what, on a machine that isn't important. Because honestly, uh, when I have a real problem with a machine and things go really, really bad, uh, that's usually a lot more stressful. So why not just play with it here? Hopefully I answered your question. And if you, anyone else has any other questions, please don't hesitate to put it in the stream, or the, sorry, the, the chat. Um, I'll try to answer them as much as I could, as well as I can. Um, okay, so BDB, no. Oh, that did something. So if I go back here, hey, it did work. Okay, cool. All right, so that's a win. Um, DF or LS dash L L H. <laughs> that makes sense why our driver was so small. <laughs> it's because we made it really small here. Um, so let's go ahead and raid zero. Yes, raid disk one. Oh, is it supposed to be capital G? Um, yeah, it's capital G. Ah. So now if I do L S S L A H. No. Interesting. Okay. Um, let's find out what has changed. Ah, so um, Creature NX has, uh, what would be the practical application? Is there a difference between software RAID and hardware RAID? Absolutely. There's a huge difference. Um, so hardware RAID, there's the actual work is done on um, w on an actual card. Let's see if I can find a just a picture of one real quick. Uh, RAID card. Uh, so here we go. Um, uh, images. So let's take, for instance, um, this one right here. So a RAID controller, a storage controller, this one's SATA. So if you have uh, SATA hard drives, wherever the SATA controllers are on here, um, you you can put a bunch of hard, drive, hard disks together. As you see, you're spending $589. Um, Oh, okay, cool. You have no, no experience with RAID technology or VM. Okay, perfect. So let's take even a farther step back. Um, all right. So when you spin up any virtual machine or a VM, um, you normally, most of the time, you get one disk on there. And it's usually um, attached to the VM um, on via software. Um, back in the days when people actually did physical hard drives, um, physical machines, you'd still, you'd have a physical hard drive attached to a... A motherboard and um, you would write all your stuff you have partitions on there and then eventually um, one one hard drive means uh, a single point of failure so they came up with something called RAID which it actually stands for uh, redundant array of inexpensive disks R-A-I-D um, <laughs> thanks Jack thanks happy room I'm trying I, I, I'm very passionate about this stuff what can I say um, so, so it's, so the idea was you'd be able to take a bunch of really cheap disks instead of something called SCSI at the time, um, which were really, really expensive and be able to make them all look like one disk, or if you like put a bunch of them together, um, or you could do two disks and have, um, mirroring between them, or you could do something called striping, which allows it for really fast reads and things, um, things on it. So... But you'd have to have one of these cards. Now, imagine, like, well, this is obviously a pretty high, high one because it's $600. But the idea is you'd have a physical card that did this. Well, what they've done is they actually took it and um, rolled the same software that is run on this card uh, inside the Linux kernel. And that's what the MDADM 
this this guy right here, and I'll put this in the chat again, um, allows you to leverage. So as soon as we get our extra drive attached fakely, attached to our 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 VM, I can use MDADM to create software RAID um, on on the Linux kernel without needing to worry about it. So I can take, for instance, um, this uh, Fedora root partition. Um, if I go back up in here, um, so I can take, for instance, this VDAD2, and then I can use software RAID to mirror it to the new hard drive that we just added to it. So that in in the most perfect world, uh, that's me making sure that I have a backup copy on the block level of the so of the computer, um, making that that connection happen. That's really important. That's a lot different than using like Dropbox or or Google Drive, right? Where that's on the files or that's on the um, user land level. This is me telling the computer everything on this device, this this partition. I want you to copy block for block onto that other hard drive. And of course, because I'm doing this on VMs, I'm faking all this stuff out, and that's fine, right? That's fine, not a big deal. But I kind of, I'm, I'm practicing that, and I figured there'd be a good opportunity to kind of just show this. Did I answer y'all's questions? I'll give that a second to catch up. Let's see here. So we need to create. Command bitmap resize. A question is, is my Linux dev? Um, by definition, n no. Um, I just use I've used Linux for decades, going on decades now. Um, I'm a developer advocate for the IBM cloud. Um, so, but I spend a lot of my time in the Linux ecosystem, running servers and doing things on there. Um, so, I just have kind of like, you got to keep your chops, you got to keep your um, your skills up, right? Like you've got to you got to go back to all this stuff. And being that you know, I have some really important stuff on um, Linux machines now. Uh, it's a good opportunity to to get down deeper than you normally would. So, uh, Creature NX says, so you're using the software to create an exact copy of a hard drive on a fake hard drive drive in the VM. Um, so it's not technically a fake drive. Um, that's what I'm trying to do down here on this bottom one right here. I'm trying to create a new hard drive. Um, these QCOW2s are all hard drives here. I'm trying to create a new one that's 20 gigs that I can use to tell the other machine, um, which is this guy up here, um, that you can copy everything directly to that other hard drive. Now, if I was actually in like a data center, for instance, um, this would be really, really important. Because this is all on my local machine, um, it's not as cool. But if you're actually in the cloud ecosystem, for instance, uh, it's possible that when you build all these fake hard drives, you, the hard drive could be literally on the other side of the, the data center, right? Because you're using shared storage or something like that. Um, that's the same thing, thing you see with uh, uh, attaching uh, persis persistent storage to uh, Kubernetes clusters or, or OpenShift clusters or cloud VMs or whatever. So I'm just kind of faking out that process here. Hopefully that answers your question. So we need to figure out um, how to create the size of, is there like a, here we go. So it says Capital G for gigabyte. That looks right. I don't do anything else pretty crazy here. File name. Oh, it's plus. I forgot the plus, didn't I? So if I do 5G, like that. Nope, still the wrong size. Mm. RM RAID. Uh. Hi, your question is how do I do the re reverse search? 
So it's actually what um, what I'm using is something called Tmux. Um, if you notice this this, uh, this red bar down here, um, it's called Tmux, and uh, it, there's some Vim commands inside of it. Um, if you want to take a look quick, quick quickly, there's a Tmux.conf that you can just change some things around. Um, if you do Control B um, open bracket, it puts it into um, scrollback that you can actually do slash searching. So I can do set, for instance, and it tells me all the different sets and goes to my next ones. Um, and then I can even do um, question mark search. So I can do shell and it'll look for shell. Uh, Tmux is unbelievably powerful. Um, and if you want, if you play with Linux at all, um, you really should spend your time um, playing around Tmux. And this book right here is bonkers great like legit it is worth every single penny um here where is it? it's like it's like where is it here we go ebooks for 18 dollars um i've also been told um if you guys should reach out to brian hogan um and ask him for a, a copy he'll give you one too uh, just to be like hey i want to learn tmux but i am a student or whatever um he's he's pretty nice about that but this book right here um it would truly is amazing especially if you already use vim um or vi or vim uh tmux vi and, and vim all come together um just to keep going with that real quick if you take this for instance you can split the window you know oops over here so i can do like top dash c up top oops and i can go around so i can be like tail f bar log um install dot log right like i can have ssh dude so i can have like me working on the machine right here checking out something over here and then i can come back over here to you know split that again and do all that and you can even save um you know uh workspaces so so it's 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 real real useful um and then obviously there's multiple windows inside of it too. And you can flip things back and forth. Like it's a, it's a whole thing. Like you can rip real, real crazy. Um, if you want to, what I'll do is just uh, .tmux. Um, here is my, oh. Just log in. Uh, give me a second here. I was trying to be helpful, and of course, things never work how you want them to. Uh, yes. Cool. So now, what I'll do is take that, and that should be now up on here. There we go. So if you all want something to start with, there you go. So you can just play around with it. Um, like I said, it's it's real basic stuff. Like this is this is you can get real deep real fast using Tmux, um, but this is just enough for me to make sure that um, I can manipulate it as much as I want. So hopefully that helps. Okay, where were we? Um, go ahead and close that. Go ahead and close that. Clean that up, and we'll go back here. All right. So our problem is is that we can't seem to create a five gig drive. Am I forgetting a flag or something? Um, now, you know what? This is when Google comes into play, right? Q E Q E M U E M U image creates. Oh, IBM. Well, that's nice. Um, I'm, that looks exactly the same to me. Like, it doesn't look like we're doing anything different here, right? Um, QCOW2, disk. I mean, I could just put the PWD, disk1.
Nope, see, it's done it again. Still it. Q. Excuse me. Um. Yeah. Q. Q. E and U. Image create one ninety three K. Oh, is it because I'm just doing this as Oh, so it is actually the right size. So if we do um, QEMU -E info or QEMU G info raid one QCAL. The virtual side is five gigs, but the actual. Wait, why is it? Okay, so this one. Okay, let's try that. Uh, so verse uh, attach disk MDADM source PWD raid one two cal target B D B driver Q EMU. So I come back over here now. Still says it's 192K. Okay, so he's forcing us to see that too. F disk. Dev BD DB print. Yeah, so we need this metadata. So all we need to do is first detach disk MD A D M. And PDB. So now we do QEMU image convert FQ cow. Two O Q Cow two pre allocation pre I didn't spell that right L O C A T I O N meta data and that would be Read to that. And then uh, let's see here. I don't like how he skipped that number. I think that's a typo. So we'll do ray disk one meta data. OS dash LA. There we go. There's our five gigs. So so what we did is we had 
Oh, this is interesting. I should... Here, and we give this around this to everyone else, too. In case you're doing this at home. Um, that is a very helpful... That is actually how to do it. <laughs> compared to what I was doing earlier. Um, okay, so now I can do... Bursh attach disk mdadm source pwd grade metadata target and that's the actual thingy yep edb driver qemu now if i come back over here there's our five gigs perfect Wait. After all that, <laughs> ugh, we actually need something bigger because that's what the big how big the drive is, right? Ugh, damn it. Okay. Um. So what we'll do is detach. Okay. And then RM ray disk star. Yes, yes, five G. We'll do this as twenty, right? Yeah. Now let's show A. We should now have twenty. So then, if we come back over here now. We convert it. LS LH now. And there's our metadata with 21 gigs. Okay, perfect. So now attach to that. Come back over here. Print. Yay, we got our 20 gigs. Sweet. Yay, yay. Cool. Okay. So now, now we can arbitrarily put hard drives against our our thing that's good so now now that we've done that don't need this don't need that uh, hey Amerto, how you doing buddy um so well, i've been playing around with some qmu and um the uh Playing with QEMU, QEMU, and also going to try my old ultimate goal is to um, go through this MDAD, MDADM cheat sheet um, and try to show how to create a um, to to mirror two two disks, mirror from um, uh, one 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 drive one one partition to another. Uh, almost there. Um, we'll see how it goes. <coughs> okay, so, um, so I need to new new for the primary partition of one first sector, um, and then last sector. So I print twenty gigs is just what I expected. So I want to go ahead and write. All right. So then now what I can do is. <laughs> exactly, Hammerto. Um, that is uh, one reason why I'm doing this on VMs on my local machine is because I know one one of my things break, and I'm going to have to figure out how to do this myself. Um, the stress of trying to get all that stuff to work is unfortunate. Um, but if I'm doing it now in a free kind of like learning environment, I at least don't have to worry about like the stress of the breaking. Okay, so... Um, so if I look at, uh, MK, uh, make FS dot XFS dev VDB one, and then mount just to show that it works VDB one to say mount, I hit mount. And there we go. There is our um, there's our drive mounted, our fake drive that we created, and now mounted to that. 
which is cool. That's fine. That's great. Um, that means we can just arbitrarily add more and more hard drives to these things, um, which is cool, but not, not the actual ultimate goal. Um, the ultimate goal is to get this, uh, this drive here, I don't know, two, VD2 mirrored over to V1. Uh, we shouldn't be able to mount it anymore, so let's go ahead and you mount MNT. And if I do DH-F, it's gone. That's just good. So now actually let's get over into MDMA. MD, you know what I'm trying to say. MDADM. So what we're going to do is MDADM create verbose. Oh, wait. Oh, shit. Um, this creates a new hard disk. So, yeah. This isn't going to do what I wanted to do. It concatenates two partitions into one, and then you do the new file system on top of MD0, for instance. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to have to figure out a way to get more hard drive space on this guy. Yeah, there's only 19 gigs left. What's taking up all my space on this thing? Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, hmm. Okay, well, unfortunately, um, I can't finish what I wanted to do today because of... I mean, I guess I could make some other hard... Mm. I mean, I could put in slash. I need, more. I, I need more physical hardware for this to work how I want it to. Um. Do I have another hard disk in here? What the hell is this? I got 200 gigs sitting on a Microsoft. Oh, do I have Windows on that box? That's right. Oh, crap. All right. Um, I mean, I haven't actually used that in a while. I guess I could just do that. But then I want to extend that's DB3 over to it. Uh... Let's see here. Um, I mean, I haven't really used this thing for anything else, so yeah, I guess I could just do that. All right, so F disk SDA print delete one delete two write now uh, make fs dot xfs dev or no uh, left disk new uh, do I want to create I'll just create one partition that's fine um, right and then okay fs dot xfs dev sda one Let's see here. I can taste it. We're almost there. We're almost there. But I need this to work first. Just thinking about it. We're discarding blocks. Oh, actually, you know why this is while this is going, it's gonna take a few minutes anyway. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the BR back sign up. I've been going for about an hour anyway. Um, I'm gonna use some water.
So I'll be back in a couple minutes. <laughs> back um yeah of course as soon as i walk away it said it was done but you know that's that's the way these things are um okay so here we go um we have now our hard drive now has partitions on it i'm going to do um i am going to do Um, create a directory in here called extra HDDs. So if I do mount dev sda2 print wd extra htds have you mount there we go so i should be able to go into extra htds now and then do that five oops <coughs> five g um, 
Wait. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, 21 gigs, so 20. There we go. So we'll do two in extra HDDs. It's probably because I have a dash in it, it's causing them problems. Do that. So then do extra HDDs. Then we can do convert. To two and two, and now we have our 21 gigs. Perfect. So then we can do attach of two to C. That's the reason why we didn't do it. Because we ran out of PCI slots again. Ah, uh, crap. Um, hmm. Don't know how to get around this. How do I add more PCI slots? Adding PCI slots to KVM. See here. This is uh, hella deeper than I thought it was going to be. too confident on this I feel like I need to do some more research comfortable doing this because I don't know how this is going to go. All right. Um, well, that's unfortunate. Um, mainly because, you know, I need to uh, do a little bit more research um, before I do anything else. When I start playing around with back, I'm back into the XML. Um, that is uh, never a good sign. So I'm going to go ahead and call it for now and go off and do some research and try to take another stab at this um, another day. But at least you got to see um, how easy it was to uh, play around with, you know, FDISC and um, MDADM, MDA even though I didn't use it. Um, you saw how easy it is to take different and just uh, different partitions and then create a very simple um, device attached on it. Um, there's also some networking stuff you can do. Um, and yeah, it's that kind of stuff. So, uh, hope you all had fun. Um, and I will talk to you. Uh, I'll be back next week or maybe tomorrow. No, next week, next week. Bye.